Welcome learners to today's lesson on geometric patterns, where we are going to be focusing on the practice and application questions. Let's get to our questions. So the first question that we find there says, let's find the next three terms of the following pattern. Now the pattern that we have there is 16, 8, 4, and 2. Remember, for you to find the next three terms, you need to investigate or figure out what is going on from the first term to the second term and to the third term. So what relation do you see there between our numbers? So we have 16 and then we go to 8 and then we go to 4. If you are thinking that we are dividing the numbers by 2, then you are absolutely correct. For me to move from 18 to 4, I am dividing by 2 or multiplying by 1 half. Again, from 8 to 4, I am multiplying by 1 half. And from 4 to 2, I am multiplying by 1 half. So if I were to multiply by a half to get to the next number, what would be the next um, term? That would be 1. And then from 1, if I multiply by half, what would be the next term? That would be 1 over 2. And if I multiply the 1 over 2 or the 1 half by half, what would be my answer? Yes, that would be the 1 quarter. And of course, that pattern can continue indefinitely. Let's go on to the next pattern. It says here, considering the following numeric pattern, that is 2, 6, 18, 54. Represent the numeric pattern in a table. So we are going to look at this pattern and we are going to try and see what is going on from the first term to the second term and to the third term. What is the relation between them? So when I look at 2 and 6, I notice there that from 2 to 6, I multiply by 3. And again, from 6 to 18, I notice that I multiply by 3. So, is 18 multiplied by 3 also 54, as our fourth term says it is? If you check with your calculator, you can see that, yes, from 18 to 54, I multiply by 3. So there is a constant number that I'm multiplying by. So I'm going to represent that now in my table. So we can see that the first term there is 2, and when we multiply that by 3, that gives us a 6. And when we multiply that by 3, that gives us an 18. And when we say 18 multiplied by 3, that gives us a 54. So those numbers were already given in our pattern. But what is the next number? And how do we get to the next number? That is going to be 54 multiplied by 3. And the answer for that is 162. And again, how would I get to my next number from 162? I would say 162 multiplied by 3. And that answer would be, if you have there on your calculator 486, then you are absolutely correct. So with this pattern, we are just multiplying by 3. Let's look at the next geometric pattern. And from there, let's see if we can figure out what is going on here. So we have how many lines. So as you can see there, our table is requesting for the number of lines in each diagram. So how many lines do we have there? If we look at the first picture or the first diagram, and if you count the lines there, how many lines do you have? Yes, you have 12 lines. So 12 lines for the first picture. Let's look at the second picture. Are you counting the number of lines there? If you have counted 19 lines, then you are correct. So from 19 lines, we go on to the third picture. And how many lines do we have there? Yes, there are 26 lines. Now, if you look at the first number of lines, the second number of lines, and the third number of lines, I hope you are already seeing that there is a pattern here. So even though we have not been asked to draw the next diagram, but we can see a pattern that is going on here. So what would the next number be? 
if you are thinking of 33, it means that you have seen the pattern that is going on here. Yes, from one picture to the next, we are adding seven lines. So from 26, if we add seven, that gives us 33. Now moving on to the next picture, if we add seven, that will give us, sorry, 40. And if we add seven to 40, that will give us 47. And if we add 7 to 47, that will give us 54. So we are adding 7 every time. Now, what would be the nth term? Now remember, for us to find the nth term, we need to find the general term. And as we can see, we are adding 7 each time. This means that we can find our tn. So our tn we know is going to start with 7, and we are going to multiply that by n. But then now, what number must we add or subtract so that we can get to, um, so that we can finish off, sorry, our algebraic equation. So remember how we test? We are going to take term number one. And we can see that the term number one is 12 because it has 12 lines. So we are going to say seven multiplied by one. And then we must find the number that we are going to add or subtract to this seven multiplied by one so that the answer is a 12. So 7 multiplied by 1 is 7 and then if I add 5 that is going to give me 12. Let's choose another term that I'm going to test with there. We can take there the fourth term. So this means we will say 7 multiplied by 4 which is 28 and if I add 5 that is supposed to give me the value of the fourth term and in this case that is 33. So what is 7 multiplied by 4? 28 and then if I add 5 to that how much is going to give me yes it is going to give me 33 it means that if I add 5 to my algebraic equation then that will be the equation for this pattern so 7n plus 5 so that is going to be our nth term and if we look on the table, it requires us to find the 20th term. So that is exactly what we're going to do because now we have a formula already. So the 20th term would be 7 multiplied by 20 and we add 5. So what is 7 multiplied by 20? If you are thinking of 140, you are absolutely correct. This means that the 20th term is 140 plus 5, which is 145. So that is going to be the number that goes there under the 20th term. Let's move on to some more practice questions. Now I have a pattern there, 1, 2, 4, 7 and 11. So what is happening in this pattern? We can see that the first difference is 1. And we found that by saying 2 minus 1. The second difference there is 2. And we found that by saying 4 minus 2. When we say 7 minus 4, that gives us a difference of 3. And when we say 11 minus 4, 7, sorry, 11 minus 7, that gives us a difference of 4. So can we fill out our table? Yes, we can. So the first term there is 1. The second term is 2. The third term is, sorry, the third term there is 4, the fourth term is 7, and the fifth term is 11. Can we continue that pattern so that we can find the sixth term and the seventh term? Of course we can. If we have 11 there, what number am I going to add next? Yes, I'm going to add a 5. And if I say 11 plus 5, that gives me 16. So that means that is going to be our sixth term. And what is the next number that I'm going to add to 16 to get to my seventh term? Yes, that is going to be adding 6. And if I say 16 plus 6, that is going to give me a value of 30, sorry, 22. So that answer for the seventh term is going to be a 22. Let's quickly go to an ad break and then we'll see you just now.